Let me take this across to Nagarjun and Dwarkanath, who's keeping a very, very keen eye from here at the ISRO headquarters of what's happening meters away from us, what the ISRO scientists are saying, what Team Chandrayaan is saying. The last update, Naga, that came in an hour ago from ISRO confirmed that the ALS will happen. So I think it's essentially safe to say now that the landing is going to happen today. Well, that's absolutely true, Akshita. Uh, around uh, 604 is when we'll have the soft landing done. Uh, we are just waiting for the lander to come to a designated point where the landing procedure will be initiated. That's around 5.44 p.m. exactly when, uh, let's call it, say, spot X. The moment the lander comes at that exact spot X, that's when the command will be initiated. The commands are already locked. It was uploaded this morning. By 1.32, it was supposed to be locked, considering all the weather changes and other parameters. Now it has been locked, is what we are t uh, telling. In next three hours is when the landing will, uh, process will start initiating. Its automated landing uh, system is uh, what we are told, uh, uh, that it will start its descent. It's a powered descent. Uh, there will be retrofiring done as well. Uh, when the lander is just above 6.8 kilometers uh, above the lunar surface, two engines out of the four engines will shut off. And uh, at 150 meters just above the lunar surface, the camera will look at a clearer spot where it can land. It will have three, four options. Where should it land? If there's any uh, minimal changes, then it will make its change. Should I go on to spot one or spot two? There's something called a radio altimeter. Uh, the moment the lander starts descending, a uh, laser beam goes through the surface of the moon and it hits back to the lander, giving you exactly the height in two nanocentimeters as well. That's how precise the landing will be taken up. Uh, the radio altimeter will help the lander to get exactly the soft landing spot and the velocity also will be decreased to zero by the time it touches down at 6.04. Okay, Nagarjun getting us all of those updates. Uh, let's bring in also our guests uh, on this broadcast. Mr. Alurag Pandey of AstroCamp India stays with us. We've also got Mr. Manish Purohit, former ISRO scientist and space educator. Uh, Manish Purohit, if I can come across to you first, I'm sure you're very excited. And you're counting down much like the entire country and the world is for that soft landing of Vikram right now. Uh, can you explain to us, you know, when the ISRO says that commands have been sent across, what happens in these crucial hours to the run-up to the landing? See, uh, once that autonomous landing sequence sets in, then we all will be monitoring. The way we will be looking at the live stream, even at our command centers, they will be monitoring what's happening. So as the things move on, let, let's start at this moment what's happening. Right now they are just keeping a very close eye on the health, on the parameters, orbital parameters, about different aspects that what can be the small little test that can be confirmed right now related to the system, the cameras, everything should be just perfectly in place at this moment. So that is what they are going to do right now keep a very close eye on the different parameters. There are so many that has been tracked, that has to be tracked. But once that ALS sets in, means those last 17 minutes of terror, when they set in, the, after, that time, after that we are just simple spectators. What's going to happen there will be, at that moment we'll be cruising at around 1600, 1600 meters per second, somewhere around 25 kilometers above the lunar surface and 750 kilometers away from our landing site. We will have, the first phase will be rough breaking phase. In the rough breaking phase, we'll be firing all our thrusters. We'll be covering around 700 kilometers of distance horizontally. And we'll bring okay. our Vikram lander in a position of some, some inclined position with the vertical axis. And during this phase, we will be again calibrating our different altimeters and our different sensors. After this, the next will be just 10 second phase. The first phase will be around for 11 and a half minutes. Then the next 10 second phase will be attitude control phase. Now, this is the part where things started to go wrong in Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2 time, this phase was for around 38 seconds and it was called camera costing phase. Camera costing phase or attitude hold phase, almost the same thing, we have to just Attitude means the position of the spacecraft, the Vikram will be held in that particular position and we will be clicking images of the lunar terrain just to make sure we are on the right track, we are approaching the landing site and everything is just fine as per the plan. 
So do, during those 10 seconds, we are going to do that comparison using AI with the camera images and onboard images that we have. After that will be the fine breaking phase. Fine breaking phase will finally bring us over the landing spot 800 meters above the ground and we'll be hovering. No horizontal velocities, no vertical velocities, we'll be just there hovering, thrusters will be firing, keeping us just there stable. At that point of time, we'll be measuring the distance from the ground, we will be again switching on our sensors, cameras, everything will be working, taking the data, putting it into the processor, okay. the onboard, onboard computer, and we will gradually descend to a height of 150 meters, there, the lander hazard detection and avoidance camera will start its very important role of detecting if there is anything that can create a hazard for soft landing. If there is nothing, it will be a go ahead. If there is something, so there will be faces. a... Yeah. yeah, so there are four faces. So I think those four no faces condition. you have explained very, very well. They are altitude control phase. That's the tricky one. And I think what we have learned from that is essentially that, you know, if anything could go wrong, it could happen in a fraction of a second, which is why there must be control at all times. Astro scientists, as you're pointing out, will also essentially be watching what we're watching, but they'll of course be monitoring it with much greater detail. Before I take this across to our other panelists as well, uh, I'd like to also play out what my colleague Sneha Mordani told us about earlier, about the 15 minutes of terror and exactly what happens. You heard what Mr. Manish Purohit has said. He's explained that to you in great detail. But let's, in fact, pull out for you exactly what happens in those 15 minutes of terror. From 5.45 approximately it will start. The landing will begin. Uh, and the entire process will go on for four phases till 6.04 p.m. So that's essentially 15 to 19 minutes. You've got some experts who are telling us that, look, that moment of terror, those minutes of terror could even go up to 30 minutes of terror. And that's because these are very, very intricate, complex, complicated procedures. They could take time. It's all automated. So if there's a reason for Vikram, let's say, you know, uh, needs to move to another location, finds debris where he's about to land, they could then move to another location as well. So uh, we will get you that graphic in just a bit, the 15 minutes of terror, which my colleague Sneha was explaining for us earlier as well. We'll play that out for you in just a bit as well. co-founder and CEO of Starscape's experiences as well. Paul, you know what stands out for me, uh, away from the technicalities, is also how excited we've got everyone, particularly the younger generation. I remember when I was speaking to some students yesterday, I was amazed. They know words like lander, they know exactly what a rover is, they know everything about Chandrayaan-3. And that's amazing to see. That's been another huge impact of what ISRO really has done in India. Yeah, Akshita, thanks for hanging me over. Uh, it is true. I think the uh, energy and the enthusiasm among children today because of something like this and everything, honestly, which ISRO does is pretty massive. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we are from the astrotourism industry and we are seeing that excitement grow over time and stuff like this just keeps, you know, hyping them up even more. Uh, in fact, uh, I had gone for the Chandrayaan uh, launch on uh, July 14th to Sri Harikota and that gallery of 5,000 is filled with over 10,000 people and most of them were school children. They had come from schools from as far away as, you know, Pilani and Indore and Delhi. And uh, that is extremely heartening to see. And ultimately, these are the ones who are going to, you know, drive everything in the next 50 years and it's great to see that kind of an enthusiasm there.